I'm going to show you how I designed this 3D sculpture of two hearts together forever using FreeCAD, Inkscape, and Prusa Slicer to 3D print this model in two colors. I'm creating this project using FreeCAD, which as the name suggests, is a computer-aided design program that is free to download and use. Let's start by creating the base uh, using the part design workbench. And I will click Create Body, then Create Sketch, and select the XY plane and click OK. I'm going to use the Circle Design tool to and, uh, center that circle in the very middle. Click again and it creates the circle. And I'm going to go up to this and constrain the diameter of the circle by clicking on it. And I want to make it 80 millimeters. I'll close that and go to the model view in the combo view and highlight the sketch. And then I can take a look at it from the sides, but I want to give it some dimension. So I'm going to click pad and it gave it a 10 millimeter dimension, which I can change by going up or down on uh, the length buttons, but I like the 10 millimeters. So I'll click okay and stay there. And then I want to give a little more shape to this. So I'm going to click an edge and it gets highlighted in green and then use the fillet to tool to give a little bit of rounding to that edge. And I can increase the size of the fillet. I'm going to take it to five millimeters. I want to do the same on the bottom. So I'm going to select the edge down here. Hit fillet and increase this I think it to be the same size. But actually, if I take it up to five millimeters, it's bumping up against the other fillet, so it won't work. So I'm gonna give it the maximum size I can. If it's less than five, I'll go to 4.99 and click OK. And I think that looks good. So next thing I wanna do is import my heart shape. So I will create a body and then import it. But before I do that, let me show you how I created the heart shape that I'm going to import. Now you can certainly create a heart shape in FreeCAD, but it won't have much character. So I prefer for non-symmetric organic shapes to draw them and then either scan the photo or take a picture of it and then use Inkscape, which is a free tool to convert that drawing into an SVG. So once you have your drawing, go into Inkscape, which is free to download and use, uh, click open, add your drawing and use the default settings. Just click OK. And then go to path and trace bitmap and make certain that your drawing is highlighted by clicking on it and uh, click apply again using the default settings. And now you can close the bitmap and you can move one drawing off the other. Uh, that's the old drawing that I'm going now to highlight and delete. I have the new drawing and I'm going to click Save As and let's call it Heart. And we're saving it as an Inkscape SVG. And now we can use that in our FreeCAD design. Next, I want to create one of the hearts for this project. So I'm going to create a new body and I will right click this body to rename it. Click rename. I'm going to call it heart one because I'm going to have two hearts in this design. And then I'm going to click import and import the SVG of the heart that we created previously by selecting it and clicking open and then selecting SVG as geometry as I import it. And I now imported the heart on the paths. So next thing I want to do is 
create a sketch out of these two paths. And the way I do that is I go to the draft workbench. I've highlighted the two paths and I want to say draft a sketch. And that creates a sketch and since I'm done with these two paths now and they're highlighted I can just hit delete and use my sketch which you can see there. Now I can tell that I want that sketch to be bigger so I'm also going to use the draft workbench to make a bigger version of that sketch. And the way I can do that is go to the tool that says scale. I'll click scale and I want to scale it as a factor of two times. Click OK. And I have a sketch that's twice as big. So I can make uh, the other sketch disappear from sight by clicking it and pressing the space bar. Now with this sketch, you go back to the part design and again, go to my model view so I can see the sketch. And I want to pad it. But if I push the pad button, we'll see it can't pad because it's not part of an active body. The way I fix that is I'm going to make this part of the heart one body by just dragging it up on top of the heart and letting go of the left button. And now it's part of the body. And now I can pad that sketch, again using the pad. And 10 millimeter pad looks good to me, so I'm going to click OK. And then bring my model back into view by hit the Fit All button. And there I see I have both my face and my... Now to move that heart, I can click on my heart body and right click it and use this tool called Transform. And transform will allow me to move that body independently of my base. So let me rotate that body first. So I'm going to move to the side and rotate it. Until it's at 90 degrees with my base. And then I can use these arrows to move it up. And move it across. And eyeball that. I'd like it to be a little bit in the base because the base is going to hold it, but not too far in. So I'll zoom in on that. That looks good to me. Is that okay? Let me refit it into my screen again. And then I can use these to kind of center it back around and get a front view. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Now I want to add a second heart, which I could do the exact same way that we made the first heart, but there's a simpler way, which is just copy the first heart that we made. And I want to copy all of it, so I click OK. And then just paste it. I also want to change the size of that heart to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to go down and add find the sketch that we made that out of and highlight that and I can see the scale and you recall we made this two times the size so this one I want to be 1.6 is large so I'm going to click it and hit 1.6 with X axis and same thing 1.6 for the Y axis and now we have a smaller heart now I can do what we did before which is Click the heart, number two, and transform it and move it around. So I wanted to have it a little bit of offset um, from the main heart. So I'm going to offset it by 30 degrees and then try to position it in the same position as the first heart. That probably looks pretty good. Look at it from a different angle. Now I want to add the inscription. You can do this a couple ways. One would be in the draft workbench. We could utilize the shape string tool, which is right here. Uh, but instead, I am going to project on the face using the part tool because I already created the inscription I want to use. And uh, 
created it as an SVG just the same way that I created the heart. So I'm going to do it that way. So first thing we want to do actually is add another body. We'll go back to part design. Um, go to the model view and we'll click add a body. And I'm going to right click the body name, say rename, call this inscription. Now I can click file and import. And now we'll import the SVG of my inscription. And I'll import it as SVG as geometry. Now you can see it's there, kind of hidden by the base. But what I want to do now is, let's go back to the top. What I want to do now is uh, make that into a sketch. We do that by highlighting all the paths. Go back to the draft workbench. And click the draft to sketch, draft to sketch button. And we've created a sketch so I can delete these paths. Now my sketch left and you can see it's just an outline of the characters again. So I wanted to have that filled in. So I lay my sketch and click make face from wires. And that filled in the face between the wires of that sketch. Now, if I move the face over my body, the inscription body, just to make sure it's connected, I can now move it by transforming it. Move back out and let's move it up. And turn around to the top and look at it the way I want to look at it. All right, now I can put it where I want it. I think I want to turn it just a little bit. There we go. I think that's the right spot. And now I want to project it on the surface. I move this around a little bit. And now if I click the base feature, I can click this button that says create projection on surface. Click select projection surface and click where I want to project. Now I can add a face and I go down here. and start adding my face. And I highlight each segment and click. And you can see that it extruded on that face. Extrude height is at 10 millimeters currently. That's too high, so I'm going to change that to 2. Take a look. And maybe I'll do 1.8. I think I'm happy with that, so I'll click OK. And our model is done. If I want to see what it looks like without the face on it, I can... Uh, Highlight the base feature and push the space bar to hide it. And it looks good. All right, so now we want to save our model as an STL so that we can get it ready for the slicer. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to hold down the control key and select the body, heart one, heart two, and our projection object. So I've got everything that we've uh, utilized in this model. And I'll click File, Export. We'll call this heart. Click save. And now we'll have an STL created that we can use in our slicer. Next, I've opened up Prusa Slicer and I'm going to add our model by hitting the plus sign. And we will select the heart STL and open. And there it is. So now it's ready. We can utilize the various functions over here, including the amount of infill we want, the support, the quality level, 
I'm going to use these default settings and click Slice Now just to quickly. And it will uh, in G code. And I can go down, use the slider, and go down to the part of the model where I want it to change colors. And I'm going to, and I can use both that slider and the uh, wheel on my mouse to change this height until it just changes to start working on the inscription and the hearts. And then use this plus, and that will add change color to the model. So I'm going to click that, and now the layers above that will have a different color to them. I can expand this all the way up, and you can see the changes in color. And the great thing about this is when I put this on my printer, the printer will automatically stop at that level so that I can change the color of my filament and then continue to print. So that's how you do a two-color print on Prusa Slicer.